Let's take a look at Greg and Julie Alexander's story in a clip from the family episode of Into the Breach. Julie and I met in 1984 at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. We just literally just talked from 8 o'clock that night to 2 o'clock in the morning. One of the first guys I ever really got the opportunity to really share my heart with, share my life with. We never planned our marriage. We just did marriage. And so it's like we did things where we caused a lot of hurt and pain to each other, but then we never dealt with that. We just kept shoving it under the carpet and kept going. And we just started to become disconnected, um, really not enjoying the time that we were spending together, finding it difficult to communicate. And unfortunately, we both began looking for happiness in other people. Greg introduced into our life pornography, and I, I felt like I wasn't enough. I wasn't pretty enough. And so it was a continual pursuit for me to try to prove that I was good, that I was great. But it didn't take much for somebody to come to me and tell me things that I desired to hear from him. And at this point, she came home, and I remember her coming through the door. And he said, I am tired. I said, I am too. I can't wait to go to bed in my own home. And he said, no, you don't understand. I'm physically and emotionally tired. I think we need to get a divorce. And I don't even know what I was expecting in her from her response, but she immediately agreed. And so we had a visiting priest who came in and filled in the whole summer. So Julie made an appointment to see him. He leaned forward, he said, look guys, let me ask you a few questions. What is God's plan for marriage? What does the church teach about marriage? We were like, what does that have to do with us? We were just hoping you could help us get out of this. He said, ah, but before you go any further, I suggest you go home to find the answers to the questions I've asked. And thanks be to God, Greg did. I pulled out the Bible for one of the first times that I can remember in my life. And I read the words, husband, love your wives, like Christ loved the church. It had really began to, to dawn on me that just maybe some of my own selfishness was contributing to the breakup and breakdown of our marriage. I called Julie into her and said, Julie, I said, come here. No wonder we're screwing it up. We're not even coming close to living like, look at this stuff. My heart was on fire. And I fell in love with him more that day than I ever, ever, ever thought I could. And everything was transformed because he became a man after God's own heart. She turned to me, she said, wow, this is incredible. What do we do? And just instinctively, I said, we need to pray. I said, Heavenly Father, more than anything right here, right now, we sincerely invite you into our lives to show us how you want us to live marriage. The very next week, Julie and I both went in and we resigned from our corporate jobs. And the reason we did that, because we had come to understand that the jobs not only took us away from each other, but took us away from our Heavenly Father as well. We knew that anything in our life at that point that was not positively contributing to our marriage, it had to go. I think as many couples do when they find themselves on the brink of divorce, you always go back and you ask the question, how did we get here? And interesting enough, as we began to go back and chronicle our lives, we saw that many of the problems and issues began to enter into our lives after I had gotten a vasectomy. There was nothing that came from it other than really us using each other. Him, I felt, using me for selfish pleasure and me really using the act just to feel like I was loved. Discovering Humanity Vitae was, uh, wow, <laughs> a ground-shaking experience. I remember picking up the phone, calling Julia, and said, hey, I'm, I'm reading another encyclical, it's called Humanity Vitae by this Pope Paul VI guy. And, uh, we have a problem. <laughs> and uh, of course, the problem was the fact that getting this, this vasectomy was something totally contrary to what God had, had intended marriage to be. Contraception, again, itself, where I kind of usurped God's power to be able to determine in my life, in this case, that I didn't want any more kids. So I, I'd taken that power and authority away from Him. And so I made a beeline to reverse this procedure. It was the week of Father's Day. But about nine months after the procedure, and I remember sitting at the computer and I'm just typing away, and all of a sudden I feel a tap on my shoulder, 
and it was an envelope that Julie released that just fell in my lap. But as I opened it, from the envelope dropped his pregnancy test, <laughs> and it was positive. After having made that decision to, to permanently sterilize myself and now being rewarded with this gift, but it didn't stop there because after Catherine, then we had Michael. And after Michael, we had Ava Marie. After Ava Marie, then we had Javon. And after jo Javon, we had little Justin. We can't imagine what life would be like without any of those kids. And it's just, just been um, what I, I believe to be God rewarding us for turning back to Him in the fullness and living life the way that He intended. And when He took ownership of His position as the leader, the spiritual leader in our marriage and in our home, it transformed not only our life, our children's lives, but our, our hearts were totally made new.